So I'm just making like an overview of Julia and Michelle Chen in Tai 2. So basically, um, what I want to cover is Julia's playstyles. What does she actually do like in her game plan and um, my I, my kind of theory of how she's going to play in Tekken 7. Because we know she has a Luchador persona in Tai 2 in JC. So she got some unique moves. And on top of that, I'll cover some combos. It won't, it won't be too fancy, it's just some stuff to get started on. And then a little bit of Oki situations and um, the differences between Julia and Michelle. So um, we'll get started with the key moves then. Or even an introduction first actually. So what well, Julia is, um, she's really well rounded. She is like, um, she's really strong at controlling the neutral with stuff like 4 4 one a uh, shotgun, down, down forward one, one, that's the input, that's a shotgun. And uh, stuff like down three, which is really good, um, magic four, and then she would put, then she kind of controls the space, and um, she's really good at like chipping down your opponents, like with little, little quick pokes, like I said, like four, four, one, like down three, chab strings. Um, so when your opponent gets frustrated and wants to retaliate, you can start using stuff like um, four, four, one. And then side step their retaliation and then hop kick as a whip punisher or whatever. Or a 441 back dash and make them whiff and do 443 to punish them, for example. Um so what she's really good at, and then when she gets them to respect her 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 um pressure, you can start doing stuff like um bow and arrow, which is FC down for 43. You can start forcing these kind of mix-ups. Personally, I would recommend playing Julia as safe as possible. But you don't, there's not much to her, like you can literally just win with just these moves alone. But if you need to, you can start applying these mix-ups here. So the down 3 is free, I'll, I'll get into that in more detail later on. But basically, oh and of course, Julia has amazing grabs. Now in Tai 2, Ju JC Julia herself has a Deja Vu grab. Um, it's a, it's good, it's, it's really good, but she had a better grab previous games, which is given to Michelle in this game. So Michelle has um, Mad Axis. This is the traditional Chang grab. This is the Mad Axis that Julia had in previous games. But now Michelle has it. And Julia has a wrestling version of it now. And my, I, I hope they bring back Mad Axis in second seven. That's what I really hope. To Julia. So um, so what? What? I'll go into Mad Axis later on. I'll just give her a little, little breakdown here, right? So that's that's her. Like She's really good at control and neutral. She has amazing mix-ups if she needs to. And uh, she's amazing grabs as well. Look, she even has a Shining Wizard as well, which is similar to King and Armor King. But um, she's a bunch of other grabs, but Mad Axes and Shining Wizards would be the main ones. So let's get into it then. So what is she good at? She's like I said, really good neutral game, really, really, really good poking game, like really good to um, pressure the opponents with. Um, she has a really strong wall game. I'll get into that later on. But her wall game is one of the better ones. Really good. Some of the best grabs, like I said, Shining Wizard and, and uh, Deja Fu slash Mad Axis. Uh, Michelle's Mad Axis there. Uh, they have really high damage I put and carry. So they can carry really far and it hurts a lot as well. Uh, so for example, like shotgun combos. But I'll get into this more detail later on. Uh, their combat potential is really good because of their FC mix-ups. Um, Julia is a slightly better one, but again, I'll get into it later. Uh, weaknesses, I would say, um, they don't have a generic Dunford 1, this is their Dunford 1, but in my opinion, you treat 4 1 as a generic Dunford 4, as a generic Dunford 1, you treat, you, this is basically your generic Dunford 1, or Party Crasher, her 4 4 1. Uh, her counter launchers is a little bit lacking outside standing 4 and magic 4. Outside of magic 4, she doesn't have too much for counter hit tools, but she's really strong with that them otherwise anyway. So if she has to make a comeback, she has to take a little bit of risk to come back, like if through her FC mix-ups, because this is launch punch blown block. So like fair enough, right? But uh, yeah, she has to take a, if she needs to make a comeback, she has to take a tiny bit of risk between FC mix-ups or hop kicks. Again, I'll get into that later on. So let's start with her key moves, right? So what is this is Julia, right? This move is Julia. This move is Chang's in a nutshell, right? Basically. So you're gonna use this move a lot. Like I said, you treat it as your generic downfort one. So um, if you want to use, if you think you want to use downfort one, just do this instead. This this is your downfort one. So it's mid, as you can see, it's an elbow. So you can reverse it and so on. Uh, it can be done on paper. It can be done in twelve frame. In match, that's not really going to happen. But it's still quite quick. So I would practice getting move out as fast as you can because it's such a strong move. 
Um, it tracks. Well, the thing about that is because it's a forward forward motion, you can delay it to realign with your opponent. So I'll show you, for example. So let's say if we get Jin to um, sidewalk uh, to the left after I hit him with four forward one. As you can see, immediate four forward one whips. But if you delay it, um, you'll catch him. If you delay it, you'll catch him. And that applies in bunk directions as well. It's immediate whiffs, but if you delay it, you're real line with them. So just get used to your opponent's timings and then time your own party crashers to real line with them. It's one of the best mids in the game because it's just, it does a lot. It even floats, you know, it does a lot at once. Why is he crouching? Oh, yeah, crit guard, okay. Guard all, that's what we want. So it's minus two on block. So on block, you can move around. She's a good side step, so you can move around. You can backdash away from things. Uh, to make a whiff, so you can like hop kick with punish or or something quicker. Like, um, it's also if they do something slower on block to try and retaliate, like they use a homie move to stop you stepping, or they just mash or whatever. If they do slower moves, you can do magic four. So four foot one on block into magic four, for example. Uh, you can you know like move around, like you're going to control them with four foot one. This, this is this is your move. This is Julia's move. You're going to control them with this. It has, um, it has a follow up in four four one four. Um, personally, I won't use it too much because you can duck the high on block. Um, it, it knocks down a normal hit as well. Really good okay afterwards. Um, like for example, you can chase them, chase them back rolls. You can chase them back rolls and so on. But um, on block, it's a content launcher. So. I mean, uh, if they press buttons after 4 on block, it's a content launcher. I don't have a key charge button in this game. Uh, give me a sec. There is no key charge button in this game. Okay. Uh, one sec. Okay, there we go. So 4 4 one, 4 it's a content launcher. The follow-up is kind of hard, though. Um, you have to uh, do a dash shotgun. I'll give it a few tries. I haven't, I haven't tried this combo in years, so bear with me. But um, yeah, it, it's dash shotgun, so it takes a little bit, a few tries. I'm getting kind of salty here, actually. <laughs> okay, well, trust me, it works okay. It's hard. It works anyway. So that's 4 foot 1. So uh, actually, no, I'm going to try that combo again, man. Okay, maybe it's a Ching thing, I don't know. I'm a Julia player, I swear. <laughs> but yeah, that's a, it, it's a counter launcher. You can do dash shotgun to pick up. Um. So the next one is jab strings. So her jab is good. Um, I'm actually not sh sure how plus it is on hit. Bear with me one second. I should have had this frame that up in the first place. Okay. No, it doesn't even say. Yeah, it doesn't even say. Um, I think it's like plus five, I think. So I think it's like plus five on hit. Uh, minus one on block, maybe. Um, so basically, you can control them with jabs as well. You know, 10 frame jabs, always good. Uh, she has a she has a canned jab string, so she has one one. So this is a natural on um, counter hit. That's a breakable stun. They can mash a button to tech roll. Um, so, so she has a mid version. Like a mid version. Um, if they if they block the first two hits, they have to guess between the mid, or they guess between the low version. Um, the low version is not natural on to hit. They can they can block it, but it still mix up between the mid and the low. You can on paper fuzzy guard it, but it's extremely difficult, if not impossible. So really, most of the time it's like a cans mix up. So she has that. Uh, she has one two one. So you can so this this is a follow up to the mid. Uh, so basically, um, if you think they're gonna press buttons after a one two, you can kind of throw this in. Sometimes it's super delayable, and it has a follow up in the low. It's not natural combo to the low, but um, I think if you get the yeah, if you get the third hit on counter hit, the follow up is natural, and you get like a follow up. She can do a just frame combo off that. I will I will attempt it later. It's really hard. I haven't done it in years, but. She has a just fine combo of that. I will do it in the combo section. So basically, she can bully with chop strings and four for one. 
Right, so the next trait, the next low in like the kind of chip playstyle is Dan 3. So Dan 3, no, the really good thing about this low is it's 13 frame fast, right? A 13 frame standing low, it's really good. It's only minus 12 in block, so it's not too unsafe. And it's minus 1 in hit. But like, I mean, that's fair enough, because it's really fast. Uh, like, I said, you can, like I said, similar to 441, you can like move around. If they whiff something, you can move around. Whip punish them, uh, backdash, whip punish. Uh, if they do slower moves, magic for or jab, counter hits, whatever, you know, wherever you think. So, um, and the really good thing, uh, the really good thing on counter hit, it's, um, I believe it's plus four crouching. So let me double check that. It is plus four crouching, yes, it's plus four crouching. So 13 frame low and on counter hit, it gives you plus frames and crouching. So they can't even step one way in one direction. So... You can really bully a lot with this move. Uh, those those moves alone, actually, no. The next move as well, standing for. So like female magic for eleven frame. Um, it has follow ups. Now the her magic for is unique. That is actually unsafe on block. I minus twelve on block, but it has follow ups that you can deter them from punishing it. Like for example, if they try to punish the four, they just eat that. You know, they they will get kind of hit by the follow ups into the, hold on, the, the, the low is natural to the, they'll get Kenta hit by that, like, m really, most people won't attempt to punish it, because it's short box done, it just happens, but if, if, if they actually are, then you can start throwing at those, and, um, oh yeah, I forgot actually, no, let's go back to chap string, I actually forgot about this, Julie has another mid, out of the chap string, it's like, it's like 2-1, like a, the slight motion, like 2-1, so basically, it's, it's counted launcher if I remember correctly. Uh, I'm not sure how you, I forgot how to combo off it. But uh, I th I think it's a counted launcher, but she has some specific follow up off it. Uh, bear with me, I haven't touched this character in years. So um, she has that as like a delayed option out of it. See, I see. Yeah, like I said, standing for. Um, she can do. She can follow up with um, delayed shotgun. I believe so. You have to delay the shotgun. So um, like I'll cover this in the comment section, but she can come. She can, she can definitely combo off it. And then blah 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 blah. So um, yeah. So basically, you know, your your magic for meta is the same for every character. You know, if if you feel like they're getting too aggressive, you can throw it out to keep them in check, or you can do after certain moves on block. If they're doing slower moves, you can kind of hit them. You know yourself. Uh, the next move is 443 from Julia. So 443 is our main whip punisher at range. So up closer you want to use hop kicks, but at range you want to do 443. So now this is where the kind of differences is in Julia and Michelle comes in. So Michelle will have no choice but to do 443 dash down 1 plus 2. That's the follow up for book shines. 443 into dash down 1 plus 2. That's the follow up. But Julia has a slight, no, her Luchadora move, she has a slightly better follow up. It's a little bit less damage, but the Oki is a lot stronger. So if you do 443 into 42 plus 3, you will get 51 damage, but you get really good chase down Oki afterwards. So you can chase them down, you can chase them down and do things. Because if you try to chase them down after down 1 plus 2, you don't have a lot of advantage compared to Shoulder Barge from Julia. So, you know, you know yourself, um, at range, if you see a whiff, you can do 443. Uh, easy mode follow up is just 442, but really just do the dash down 1 plus 2. Uh, you can make them whiff through Julia's movement and usage of her moves that I previously mentioned. Right, the next move is a really is another classic Chang special. So it's called Shotgun. Down, down for 1. So this is Shotgun. So it comes out in 12 frame. Um, it's minus on hit. But it has a follow up in Dumpert 1 2. So everyone hates this against the wall because, like I said, it's 12 frame. Uh, the follow up is natural and counter hit. And the thing is, you can hit confirm it. So um, if you see the, the counter hit, you can um, you can uh, throw a ledge and it combos on counter hit. But uh, if you slightly hit the ledge, it won't be. So you kind of have to be quick with it. Yeah, see, it won't be on counter if you delay it anyway. But, in um in tie two because of the rage system uh, how do i turn on rage in this game again it was a font settings 
Great Aegis, okay. Main character, Julia. Okay. So, um... If you if you land on Kento Hit in Rage, see the hit spark in Rage on Kento Hit. The first move hit sparks. So that was a really easy way to hit confirm it on Kento Hit. Uh, see, on normal hit in, in Rage, it doesn't even spark. It doesn't spark. But on Kento Hit, it does. So that was a really easy visual confirm for Julia in Tattoo and Rage. It was actually kind of cheap. I don't think many people used that or were aware of it, but there it is there. So... So you want to bully with this near the wall? Right? Let's go, let's go to the wall. So near the wall, you know, you, I'm sure you you get the idea here. It's a 12 frame mid confirm wall splat. So it makes challenging Julia at the wall extremely scary because she can just absolutely murder you. I mean, look at that damage. That was off a 12 frame mid. So you had to be really careful against Julia versus the wall. So, um, oh, and of course, um, let's go back to mid stage again. So, Julia had a, a wind roll out of it. I, I don't know the official term for the stance. I just call it roll or spin. I just call it spin. So, downward one spin. This is, um, so this is shotgun spin. So, um, so yeah, so this is, this is mainly combo feller, but it's good in pressure as well. So, uh, if you do downward one, four, or then down forward one, three. So you can spin in either direction. So three to spin left, four to spin right. So this is good in pressure. It was minus on hit, but Julia had follow-ups too as well. Um, if I remember correctly, I can't test this now, but if I remember correctly, this unblock into the spin one traded with 11 frame, I believe. Um, I could be wrong on that, you know, it's been years, but I believe it traded with 11 frame, but it's not important anyway. That's mainly combo filler. Uh, she had this. She can she can do the spin by itself with three plus four. By the way, just just by itself with three plus four. So um, so you could do. I mean, I I don't recommend this, but the option is there. So she had um, spin four, one plus two, which is a natural low into mid. Now this was these. It's like a hell sweep, you know. It's like a hell sweep ever spin. Um. It was really good against breakable walls and balconies because she broke the wall for a full combo. So the wall break or wall ba wall balcony break to downstairs for a full combo, for example. So what I like to do was um I, I would do my wall combo, then I would manually spin and then mix up between the hell sweep or the mid splat, for example. This this is spin two. This is spin two. It's like a safe mid splat. This is it looks like her um uh, one one and then 2-1. It's the same animation. So you want to bully with Julia's shotgun. So 4 4 one, what, four, four, one and shotgun is your main mid range with Julia. So um, the next move is her hop kick. So her hop kick, um, her hop kick is unique. It's two hits. So it's like Katarina's hop kick. It's two hits. Um, you can kind of situation confirm it by that. I mean like if you kind of see what's going on just before you do hop kick, you can sort of hit confirm it. Like it's, I don't know if it's placebo. Personally, I don't believe in it, but some people could claim it. So um, because uh, you kind of react to what's going on in the instance before you do the input, and then you can kind of throw out the hop kick. So, but her so unlike Katarina's hop kick on its own, the first hit on its own, it was launch punishable. But Julia's is minus nine on block, so this is safe. So it was a really good like um low crush safe mid poke that you could kind of throw edge. So the the biggest Chang special in Tag 2 was a single hop kick into Maddox's. That was like the special. So um you want to use this as a web punisher up close. Um because um or if you have a read on a low, you can low crush. Uh now the only thing about the hop kick compared to a universal hop kick is that if you just do the hop kick on its own, it's launch punchable and block. Uh, it has a follow up with this, but you can uh, interrupt it with 13 frame moves. So like a normal hop kick punish. So you can you can always interrupt with 13 frame moves, moves. So it is like a normal hop kick punish. But if they commit to the follow up, they lose the combo. So they have to just do the hop kick by itself if they want to combo off it, etc. So um. If you if you sense a Chang 
like hop kicking you out of you know panic or whatever and they want to go for a combo do launch the hop kick because if they if they commit to the follow-up you know your launch attempt will get counter hit so you kind of have to like mix up a little bit in a way but i personally wouldn't recommend trying to do that right the next move is now this is where the differences in the chang changs comes in again so basically um julia had a mad axis grab like i explained at the start so julia had a max mad axis grab uh but in this game it's called deja Fu, which is her luchador or jc persona move so, but Michelle has the traditional old mad axes, so this is the one you want. For it's really strong because the Oki afterwards is really good. So let's say we have Jin to stand right up. For example, so mad axes, Jin stands up, she's in space for war drums. I will explain war drums, I will explain how that works in a bit. But then, um, so, so Michelle had really strong mad axes grab. Now, in Tekken 7, I hope Julia has the traditional Chang Mad Axis instead of Deja Fu, because Deja Fu, it does the same damage, has the same input and everything, but it pushes them a lot back, it'll push them a lot back further than Michelle's Mad Axis does. So it's a 1 plus 2 break, it's 11 frame, I think it's 11 frame, it's really hard to test if you don't have like frame counter or anything, but I believe it's 11 frame, which is faster than the standard grip. So... And it has a really small window to break, so it was hard to break, even if you're looking out for it. It's a 1 plus 2 grab. And the other amazing thing about it is it's really bufferable. Look, I did I did Corsair back... Okay, the, sorry, the input is Corsair go back 4-2. That is the input for the Mad Axis and Deja Fu. The really good thing is um, it's really bufferable. By that, by that I mean, look, look, look at the command list, right? The input display, I mean, look, I did Corsair back 4-2. See, it still came out. The, the, the input window is so long for you to be able to do mad axis. So um, this is really good because since it's a course of back motion, you can backdash and then mad axis, you know, it's, it's like a, you know, if they try to approach you while you're backdashing away, you can like force them to um, mad axis away. You can force them to approach into mad axis, for example. So you can, you can use it like that. Like, the fun thing about this grab is you can get really creative with it because of the speed. You can almost counter hit stuff as well. So like it's still match, it's still match something really slow after minus one hit or whatever. So you just grab them afterwards. You know, counter hit them at small, quick, uh, slower buttons. Uh, you can do it. You can buffer it during the spin, shotgun spin as well. There's so much potential in this move. This this is giant. this is a cornerstone of giant gameplay. So uh, or four for one. Um, into mad axis you know whatever uh even just crouch cancel mad axis or uh i don't know single hot kick mad axis or jab strings mad axis like the potential is unlimited you know and i really hope this move comes back in second seven as, as this grab not not the age of food uh, like i say you can buffer it during your back dash and then and it comes out that's that's the, that's the one, one really strong thing about it so um yeah mad axis Great move, one of the best grabs in the game, even in the series. Now the other the other grab they have is Shining Wizard. It's similar to Armor King and Kings. Um it's done with while well, running one plus two grab. Uh the Changs have different um mat, uh different animations under Shining Wizards. I I believe Michelle's is slightly stronger because she can do she has better rookie afterwards on the grand of Shining Wizard. But I believe Juliet might get a free hit. Again, this information is so old to me, I can't even remember much. I'm just explaining the the core gameplay of the Changs. No, okay. So that's Shining Wizard. You know, you can throw it out. Um, if you sense that they're sleeping and won't be ready to break it, there's an option there. Another move, uh, another good move is Crossover 2. So what's good about this is it's safe on block. Um, it high crushes like really well, like really early too. Uh, safe on block. Um, so you can do stuff like 4 foot 1 on block and the mash jabs afterwards you can quite crush it with this. Um, it has slightly more range than hop kicks. So like from here, let's say hop kicks a whiff, but from here, Kuzi F2 will hit. So it's a slightly better whip punisher than hop kicks if you're at range. Uh, yeah, if you sense it high, you can quite crush it with this. That's probably, that's the main purpose of the move. 
Uh, okay, so next move. No, no, this is wall game Chang's. This is Chang's wall games in a nutshell. So war drums. Um, no, this move is really unique. Um, it's kind of it's a little bit complicated to understand the first if you're not used to it, but it's easy once you get it in. So basically, the first hit is a low high. Okay, no, it has a mid follow up, but if you connect the low and the high at the same time. The mid is a natural combo. So what you have to do is you have to space it so only the low connects. And look what happens. The mid the mid is a natural combo. So now let's take this to the wall, for example. Um Oh my god, I'm like okay yeah, here we go. Okay, so if you go to the wall, look, look at this. It's a natural low low um low starter. I mean 109 damage of a low starter at the wall. Now you can kind of understand why Chang's can be kind of hated in this game. But uh, yeah, if you get to the wall, you have to be so scared of the of war drums. You have spaced out the war drums. At neutral, it can be kind of hard to connect this because they're moving around. So it's hard to get the spacing for the war drums. But there are so many subs where if you force them to tech roll, there's like a fixed spacing where you can force them to tech roll into the war drums on, on the correct spacing. So we're talking stuff like, um, now I can't set the computer to tech roll in training modes, but just imagine the tech rolls after 1-1. Um, one, one. Okay, so the tech roll, so the tech roll in one direction, then you backdash and war drum them, for example. So the tech roll, after the tech is done on the 1-1, one, one, and then you backdash, I don't know why that's not working, that's, I think I'm just delaying it too much. Yeah, just delaying it. Yeah, yeah, I was, just, I was just delaying it too much there. So if you if you get them to eat the 111 on counter hit, they tech roll, you backdash, and then war drum them. Now, the, a fun thing in the open is uh, if they keep... Nah, um, bear with me for this one. I, I think if they keep tech rolling back... Yeah, okay, so he guarded it. Let me turn off guard all, actually. Okay, so... If you keep rolling back on the war drums, oh no, he's, he's supposed to get up. Let's see. Um, I I forgot to tie to yeah tech rolls. What I want, I think. I think. I I've forgotten tied to um, settings. A stand up, I think. Yeah, okay, there we go. So, um, so war, so war drums, dash war drums. So if they keep standing up, they, this this can just be looped. This can this this can just be looped. So the the wall kind of messed up space in there, but you get the idea. So, um, so yeah, that's one option you could do. Let's get back to guarding. Sorry, this, I'm not gonna edit this or anything. This is gonna be like raw footage, so there will be some mistakes in like execution and stuff, but you get the idea anyway. So another move is while running one. So this is plus seven on block. Um, let me get him to guard it initially. So this is plus seven on block. There's a little bit of pushback, but um, you're in range for war drums. If they don't, assuming they don't move at all afterwards, you're in range for war drums. Um, so my instant while running was associated today. So you can you get them in spacing with war drums. Uh, there's not much you can do with the pushback, but you can obviously like chase them down. Uh, so like a good check would be um, while running one into four for one, for example, or whatever. So on hit, um, she gets a dash demo plus two. There we go. She gets the dash demo plus two. Michelle gets it also. So you want to you want to do this against the wall in particular because um, it was blocked obviously and um, uh, there's no pushback and block so you can use the plus seven frames to um, bully them so you want to bully them with uh, your crouching mix-ups or you want to find the spacing for war drums or you want to like threaten them with mids or whatever that's another move I should point out actually side step three it's just a safe mid wall spot. Um, I was playing wall game in more depth in a wee bit, so um, that's 
that is um, while running one, so it's, it's very good, I would say. You can do like a really super try hard combo on bigger characters like Marduk, or I believe it works on bears also. If you, um, I, I'm not going to attempt it because yeah, I could be here for like a good hour trying to attempt it. But if you do while running one, dash down two, three on Marduk, you can get a combo off while running one on normal hit. But it's really difficult, it's a lot of people drop it in game, so you know, whatever you want. Um, so while running one is good if they mistime their approach against Julia, if they approach in a wrong way, you can nail them with while running one. Okay, so let's in uh, back four. So it's a plus one, plus one on block, high and homing. So that's you want to bully them with. If they think if you think they're gonna step, you can uh, bully them with back four, and then you get a free follow up as well. If you believe, I think you get the. Okay, yeah, you, you can get like a follow up with war drums. Uh, I think you get the just ring combo off this. I'm not gonna be here for ages trying to tempt it anyway, so but. But then um, you can get just frame follow up. So basically, war drum four four one is um, the follow up that you should try and get. Then, but I don't know if it's I don't know if it's gonna be in Tekken seven. It might not be a combo in Tekken seven. But in tied to you get just frame four four one follow up, and then you do shock unbound etc. So um, yeah, I would. I mean, I wouldn't practice it now if it's not gonna be in Tekken seven. But the option is there. Like it's a lot better than just doing a follow up. So yeah, if you. Otherwise, you can just do 442, easy ground to hit. Actually, delay a little bit so you get more damage. It, it's guaranteed anyway, so just delay a little bit to get more damage. Mm, I think, yeah, he's trying to move away. Okay, yeah, that's what you want. Just delay a little bit to get more damage. So, um, so there's that. Now, down foot one. Down foot one is another good move to use with Julia in general. So basically, this is her. Well, supposedly this is her Danford One input, but like he, as you can see, it's not generic Danford One at all. But um, if now the fun thing about this move is if you land it on a crouching opponent, uh, you can see the stun there. You have your plus fourteen after that stun, so um, you can do four four three after this. Now, another thing I should point out about four four three is it can be done in thirteen frames. So on paper, you can punch hop kicks with it, and um, so. You want you have like a little bit of leniency to land this, so if you see that that was the follow up there. So you do down foot one, and then um, four 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 three follow up. A little bit tricky. Yeah, yeah see, it, it takes a lot of practice. Like like I said, my Chang is so rusty right now in terms of execution. But yeah, you saw it earlier anyway. Yeah, there you go, and dash down one plus two. So um, yeah, that's that's what you want to do, like as a follow up. Uh, easy mode follow up is um, uh, four four one four. Yeah, the easy follow up is four four one four. That's a little bit easier to do than four four three. Um, you can practice it on some characters. Like uh, there's a list somewhere like. Characters like Chimpachi, Marduk, Bears, Bob, etc. You can do Dumpfoot 1 on, on hit and then 2. Um, but it doesn't work on Jin. But on some characters you can do that. So Dumpfoot 1 on crouching opponents and then 2 hold back, 2 plus 3. That, that's guaranteed. That's 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 our 12 frame punisher. I'll, I'll talk about this later. Uh, Michelle's is different. She has a 1 plus 2, like a shove. That's, that's the old Chang thing. Okay, so another move is size up three. Size up three is safe on block. Um, it's your main mix up at the wall with war drums. Um, so you can, it's a safe. It pushes back a little bit on block, so you can still do stuff afterwards like move around and and so on. So that's another one. Uh, size up three plus four. So what's good about this move is the pushback on block. So look, see the pushback on block. Now it's character specific on how good the punishers will be on it. Uh, it's a launcher, so um, yeah. See, if you space it a little bit out, it's actually really hard to punish. So, um, and it's a launcher, normal hit as well, so you can combo with shotguns afterwards and so on. So, yeah, it's minus 21, but uh, it has a lot of pushback. So, um, 
Let's talk about her crouching game. Now, this is one of Julia's biggest strengths. So her crouching game, so her, everyone, this is called bow and arrow. I, th I think most people call it bow and arrow because it's like calling, you know, Hell Sweep or EWGF or Death Fist, you know, this is bow and arrow. So um, while it is, it's low, mid, natural combo, uh, knocks down for really strong Oki. Now, I think this would be the main thing that would be changed in Tekken 7, the Oki semi off bow and arrow. So um, the, the mix-up was... If they try to stand up afterwards, you can float them with um, 4 4 one. You can float them and they get a combo. Um, if they stayed on the ground... Where is the option for that again? If they stayed on the ground, you can... Now, this is another area where Julia shines over Michelle. So, um, traditionally, they will have to do 4 4 2 to hit them on the ground. Now, the thing with 4 4 2 is it's unsafe on block. So, if they guessed right, stood up and blocks the 4 for 2 they can punish it. But Julia has a Luchadora move and then 2 plus 3. Not only does it do more damage, it's also safe on block. And on bigger characters, she can do 4 2 plus 3, which does slightly less damage. It's similar to um, this. It's similar to this. It does slightly less damage, but the Oki is a lot stronger. So on bigger bodies, it works on Chimpachi, Bears and Ogre. So she can do this as a grand hit. And then chase them afterwards for a better rookie. Okay. So this So basically either Grenda hit or 4 for 1 refloat if they try to stand up. In in this game you can get um a bound. So let's try and get Jin to stand up. You can get bend. Oh this is this is a tag two thing. You can you can you can um screw bend again after refloats. So um yeah that's it. Another thing is um Den 3 is free, always free, no matter what. So if you just want to take a guaranteed damage, just do Den 3 afterwards. Again, this could be different in Tekken 7, it completely, could be a completely different situation, but that's what it is in Tekken 2. So you mix up the bow and arrow, which um, the most common move is what's sign 3, because um, it's safe, it's it's a homing, it's a safe homing mid from crouching. Um, so you do 4 4 2 afterwards, now you can do, or dash war drums follow up. You can you can do the just for combo, but like I said, I won't tempt it because it'll take too long. Oh, I did it! I'm actually a god. Never mind, I did it. Yeah, but that's what you want anyway. So you ideally want to do that, but it takes a lot of practice. I'm not going to tempt it again. <laughs> um, or if you if you're really feeling yourself, you can do while signing one, which is a launcher. It's a minus starting launcher, mid launcher from crouching, like a minus. If it might be 16 actually, let me double check though. I'm sorry, I, I should I should know my frames before this. It's like I said, it's been years since I played Chang's. But it's um It is 16, yes, it is 16, that's right. So it is 16 frame startup. But it's my starting on block. Um it's it's a launcher, it's a mid-launcher option. If you want to be on if you want to risk, if you want to risk it, you can go for it. Or if you want to stay safe, you can go for a well signing tree and do your 442 or War jump combo. Now her wall game, I went over a little bit, but I'll go over again because it is really important for chance. So you know you have you have your war drums, space allows you get you get them um, all that shit, all the shit. Uh, size set three to bully them. So if mids four foot one shotgun size set three. Um, this is another thing where Julia kind of shines because her two plus four two plus three. It's safe on block because if you size if you size that three, your war drum spacing will be off, so you won't really land it as successfully. But um, Michelle doesn't have four two plus three, but um, Julia does. So um, that's another thing Julia has over Michelle like, at the, against the wall. Um, another thing this another thing is I'm um, off for two. Uh, it's safe mid wall spot, uh, low crushes as well a little bit. But the main thing is um. It's a better one hit bend com it's a better one hit bend move over um back one. Back one is their main bend move between the two, but in Julia's case she can do up or two as a one hit bend for more damage. Um like I said, I'll go over that I'll go over that in a little bit more detail. So that's the key moves that are shared between the chains. So in the next section I'm gonna go over her um JC's wrestling moves. So what Julia has in this game and the differences between Julia and Michelle in particular. 
So um, I'm gonna go straight to that. I'm gonna change stage just. So here we are. Okay. So this we're gonna talk about um the differences in between the chains. So what Julia gains in tag two and what Michelle got from old school Julia. So um uh so basically um Julia has Damba 4, so this is a drop kick. Um, it's good plus frames on hit. Uh, I believe while standing three can be no while standing one can be interrupted. No, while standing one trades with ten frames. That's what it was. It trades it trades with ten frames. So they if they mash, they're gonna get comboed. Um, I believe a knock stand on counter hit. It does yes. So that's that's a really strong addition that Julia had over Michelle. Um, another one is I talked about this four two plus three. So after a 4 4 3, she gets this. Uh, after big characters, after bow and arrow, she gets this. Uh, against the wall is a, safe, is a safe mid option with a change in your spacing. So that was good. Julia also had um, Demba 1 plus 2. These are all new moves in Tai 2 because of her JC persona in Tai 2. So this was good as a tag console because if you try to punish Julia coming with this, this will move will go under will go under some moves. Or in slightly worse cases um they would just hit her and she won't get comboed so um like if Jin tried to hop kick her she would just get floaters with no combo for example so this was good as a tank cancel Michelle lacks something like that so in my opinion Julia is a lot better than Michelle in this game just because these wrestling moves are so strong another that one plus two I talked about this it was a safe mid option safe mid grand hit it option after um bow and arrow so they can push on block so it was really good. Compared, Michelle will have to do 4 for 2 to hit them on the ground, and it's unsafe on Buck if they stood up. Now, one of the bigger juices with Julia is um, her her counterana ender. So um, let's go to the wall. So Michelle would have to end. Um, okay, let's you know. Go back to the. So let's say Michelle had to. Um, So Julie has a better um, wall filler. So Michelle, Julia can do this as a wall ender. So it was hold back three, one plus two, forward, one plus two. Michelle has to shotgun spin, one plus two, four, back forward, one plus two. So Julia had a better wall filler and Julia also had um, a way better wall ender. So Michelle does her wall filler and Julia ends it in her counter runner. So it does unscale damage. Um, I believe it was it was fight damage. No, it was, it was something then twenty damage. Let's see. I oh, know Julia starts. So Julia starts. Michelle does the wall filler. It was five then twenty. Okay, so it's twenty five unscale damage as an ender, which was a lot. If you, especially if you wall carries and so on. So um, Ju Julia has this. Michelle doesn't. Michelle has to end with shotgun or um, this string here. Mountain Crusher. Um, Julia had a stance in roll stance in 4 four, 3. So um, it was okay. Um, this was a plus 1 on block high. So this is roll 1. Uh, it's plus 1 on block high. It knocks down normal hit. And she gets like a war on follow up. You can do this just frame combo off this as well. And I just did it because I'm a god. And then her counter and ender, blah blah blah, you know. So, um, roll two was a mid counter launcher. I'm not sure what the follow up was. Yeah, you could just follow up with um, 4 4 1 inch shotguns, blah blah blah, and so on. Um, roll three was a minus 12 mid. Now, some characters really struggle against this move because they couldn't punish it because of the pushback it caused on block. Let's, let's have a look on block. Um, no, I won't, I won't guard all. So, um, block, you can see it slightly pushes back on hit. You can space that a little bit. So uh, some characters just couldn't deal with this move at all. So it was really, it was kind of useful for Julia. Um, another one is roll one plus two. Uh, it's a one plus two break and a roll stance. I mean, it's a bit cheesy, but it can work if they're unfamiliar with it. Right, um, so basically this was the roll stance that's exclusive to Julia. Now Michelle's version of 4-3 is like a lashing arrow. So um, this this is Julia's old move in uh, previous seconds. So what Michelle has out of this is 
four three one. So this like four four slide one. And um, this was really good as a Punisher for stuff like Bears four four two moves with huge pushback, or just as a range range fifty range Punisher uh, whip Punisher. So um, personally, it's good as a whip Punisher and block Punisher for some moves. But really situational. Um, she had roll two. Uh, 432, I'm not sure. It's a lashing arrow, it is lashing arrow. So lashing arrow two. Uh I could be running that. I'm not like a Chang nerd or anything, but it was four three into two. Uh I think it was unsafe. I'm actually not can't remember actually. Um I'm pretty sure it was unsafe. So I was more of a Julia player than I was a Michelle player, so I could be some iffy on some Michelle things. But yeah, this is one thing she had. Um She had a... Uh, this is good, this was a good low, so for three into the low um it was really good it was really good hits like plus four or plus five or something like that and um it was a counter launcher also so she can combo off it blah 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 julia combos uh, michelle drops the combo there so um that was the differences um michelle has some chunky strings so she had she had this it was like useless cheese string whatever um i think that michelle had better in combo wise over juliet was she had um, a better um, mid screen filler, so she could do, do down, down 2 3 1, then 2 3 1. So down 2 3 1. This is a better open and open wall filler because Julia has to do. Um, Julia has to do um, the bridge, so it's like kind of like a weak one hit. While Michelle could get better open wall, open uh, filler with some characters. But in my in my opinion, anything Julia has combo wise just outshines Michelle because she gets the hurricane around Ender, she gets the full four tree string into this, while Michelle has to shotgun, which does significantly less damage. So shotgun one plus two four, a four one plus two. Right, I'm gonna go change the stage and we're gonna talk about their punishers. So basically, their punishment game was really strong. Um. So for 10 frame, they had 1-2. Both of them. Both of them had 1-2. So um, that was just generic 1-2 Punisher, you know. And, um, 12, fr uh, 12 frame, they had... Um, actually, no. 11 frame, they have Magic 4. It does slightly more damage than 1-2. So 11 frame, both of them have Magic 4. Both of them have Magic 4. 12 frame, uh, for Julia, it's 2. 2 hold back, 2 plus 3. That's guaranteed. So that did 37 damage. Um, I can't really say whose is better, because Julie has better Oki off hers in the open, but Michelle's, um, it yeah, actually wall splats. If her back is to the wall, she actually gets a follow up. So, um, for 13 frame, now, on paper, you can do 443 in 13 frame. Uh, that's the fastest speed it can be done in. Uh, if you can do it, go for it. Um, if if you can react to moves, unblock their mana starting, and then have the execution do it in 13 frame. I'm not gonna attempt it because it's gonna take me a while to do it. But that 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 is on paper a 13 frame punisher. So you get you get um 54 damage for 13 frame. Or in Julia's case, now this is Julia's school stuff for 13 frame. Her back two one plus two string. It does 43 damage. Pretty easy, pretty good, and easy for 13 frame Punisher. Now, unfortunately, Michelle at 13 frame has still has to do two back one plus two for 37. Now, for 15 frame, they both have hop kicks, so you can do your staples, so your shotgun staples or whatever. Blah 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 blah. Um, so both of them have hop kicks. Uh, for 16 frame, this is just for pushback moves and so on. You can do down one plus two. So think like Paul's death fist. Um. You can do um, demo plus two. Uh, while standing, uh, for a 10 frame you get 10 job. Everyone has this, but most characters do. So both of them have 10, 10 jobs. Both of them have while standing for, for 28 frame. Now there's a cheesy setup you can do. Um, I'll just show really quickly. It's it's like I said, it's che it's really cheesy. But if they if they tech roll after, um, let me let me make them tech roll. Will you tech roll after this? You will. Okay, so if they tech roll after this and don't block low, this becomes a natural combo. Now, this is because... I'll explain this in a bit. So you get combo off it, blah 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 and so on. 
So th this works because while standing far into back three, no, the back three by itself is not even a natural combo, right? Back three four is not even a natural combo. But um, but while standing four and hits because the back three hits earlier, it hits meaty. So the follow up is actually a natural combo. They don't duck it. It's been a cheesy setup like forever. It's a Chang thing, you know. But um, yeah, that's the thing. For a 12 frame, that is like, this is really specific and situational, but for 12 frame, they can do FC then for two. Um, it does more damage than what's standing for, but uh, the important thing is it will spot. So if you're near a wall, you should be, you should do this. Uh, for 15 frame, they have half kicks. Both of them, both of them have half kicks, and both of them have FC then for two as well. Now, let's talk about combos. I'm going to change stage for that. Okay, so let, let me show a few combos. I mean, you see me do loads of combos there, but I'll show you what they actually are, okay? So your main combo, like this is your bread and butter. So you want to do, uh, so for example, hop kick or whatever, you want to do triple shotguns. And then if you want to wall carry, you can do shock, you can do the full shotgun at the end, or you can do um, Shining Wizard. Oh god. I'm really shit guys, I'm sorry. So, triple shotgun, and then Shining Wizard under. Oh my god, I'm actually like, I'm, like, I'm gonna end this video, man. So, you do this for damage, or you can do. Um, Dash shotguns for um, wall ender. So um, yeah, that's one thing you could do. Uh, if you want a tag assault, you do. Um, no, this is Chang's. So shock and then then two three one, and then the shining wizard. You want to do um, triple shotguns into tag assault filler and then shining wizard. Uh, you can do this off while signing one as well. So triple shotguns. And then Julius Bridge, 1 plus 2, and then Shining Wizard. Uh, that's, that's your bread and butter. Triple shotgun, so then, down for 1, 4, and then down for 1, 1, so. And at the end, you do shot, spin, 1 plus 2. So your filler is shot, spin 1, shotgun, spin 1, and then your bend is shotgun, spin 1 plus 2. So, um, that's the main thing you want to do. Uh, Magic 4, like I showed earlier. You do the late shotgun to pick up off it, and then whatever your com your follow up is. So over one shotgun spin, one plus two. I'm fucking lucky because I'm shit execution. And then then one plus two with Julia, and then shining goes to the end with Michelle. That's probably not optimized. It's all I can remember for now. Um, so that's the main thing. Uh, was water starters. Like I said, the just frame combo that I was talking about earlier. So like while signing three, um, single war drum, and then four four one afterwards. No, I'm not gonna attempt it because like I did it earlier. You saw me do it earlier. So there you go. That's what you can do. You can do up while signing one. While signing three, sorry. You can do up while signing three. You can do off roll one. You can do it off. What else I say? You can do it off. Um. Oh yeah, bow and arrow. So bow and arrow. If they try to stand up. Um, let me bow and arrow, single hit. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of tricky to time. So if you time this well, you'll float them. My point, yeah. So if you you can you can float them, and then do the four four one follow up. Now the the single war drum, do the four four one is a just frame. If you want to play this game. Practice that because that's the main thing you should be getting down as a Chang player. Because I'm shit execution and I'm rusty. I don't have it down 100%, but I could do it better back in the day. So, um, so the wall combos, let's go over wall combos. Th th that's the main, that's bread and butter. Like, those things are the only, the main things you need to know. Um, Julius, t open fillers, down one plus two. You, you do this with almost every partner, down one plus two. Michelle's open ender, uh, open wall filler is down two, three. One, like I said before, that's exclusive to Michelle, and the bridge thing is exclusive to Julia. So let's go to the wall. So um, if Michelle starts at the wall, so they get wall splat, then one bend, back one bend. So Julia hold back three, three hold back, 
tap four to turn around. So, and then one plus two, four, back four to one plus two. So let's, Michelle, all splats, back one bend, Julia hold back three, one plus two, and then Michelle shotgun ender, down four to one, two. Um, Julia, so let's get war drum starter. She does back two, one plus two, Michelle shotgun spin, ender, and the board, it just drops then, okay. So Michelle shotgun, one plus two, four, back four to one plus two, and then Julia, her counter and ender, down four, two plus four. So, um, that's really the only two combos you need for at the wall with the chains. Uh, so yeah, that's it. That's it for wall combos, really. Um, yeah, so let's... I think that's it, really. That's all I have here written down to talk about. So that is Julia and Michelle Chang. Now, what I really hope... All I want for Julia is, in Tekken 7, to have old Mad Axis back. To have this grab back. Um, I would like Dropkick to remain because they confirmed that Tag 2 JC is canon. So I would really hope that um, they keep Dropkick. They keep... Actually, you know what? I didn't even go over solo wall enders. I'm sorry about that, guys. So, um, like, uh, let's say um, you get down 1 plus 2, bound 1 plus 2, 4, back 4 to 1 plus 2. That's her solo wall ender by herself. So, um... Actually, I wouldn't point out another thing about this. So, down 1 plus 2. If you bound with 1 hit, you actually get a really good tech trap. So, let me set Chin to tech roll. I'm sorry, this is kind of disorganized. Like, I'm literally just doing this on the spot. Like, I'm hoping it's, I'm hoping it's helping people. So, you, let's say you get a wall spot. And then, I force Chin to tech roll. See, I get off for neutral for tech trap. That works in both directions. So... It works in both directions, and if they stay on the ground, I will show you what happens. So, oh my god, yeah, I'm, I'm bad. I'm sorry. Demo plus two. If they stay on the ground, demo plus two will hit them. Or you can do, you can go even safer, and do the booty drop, but it sends them off the wall. So I think demo plus two might be better. So um, yeah, that's the Julia Michelle. Um, I hope, like I said, I hope Julia keeps um. The Mad Axes, the traditional Chang Mad Axes. I hope she keeps her drop kick. I hope she keeps the Harkanarana Ender. I hope she keeps um, this as a 15 frame punisher. Because otherwise she has to do this for 13 frames. So this is more damage. I hope she keeps um, the roll stance. The, the roll for 3 is pretty useful against some characters. Like I said earlier. Um, what else? Oh, the, the shoulder barge. As a safe mid wall spot, I hope she keeps that. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, I think that's all the important moves that I really hope Julia keeps, because this is more is this is more useful in tag two because of it's a filler, and um, it's a good tag cancel. Like I said, if they try to punish her while she tags and she can mess up by doing that. So yeah, guys, that's it. I'm sorry it's kind of disorganized, but. Um, I hope that helps people and gives you a good idea of what Julia Michelle can do in Tattoo. And die as long as well, but there you go guys, that's it. Thanks very much, thanks for watching. And let's hope Julia is strong in Tekken 7. And I, I really hope I can um, show, off, show off what she can do in Tekken 7. With content and guides and tutorials for when she's finally released. Alright, thank you guys.